Should we do a spoiler review for Extraction? It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's superhero slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's superhero slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week we're looking at more updated movie release dates. <laughs> um, I, that mean, was italicized if, uh, if you weren't sure what that was. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to, we're going to look at it in a positive spin, Mike. Updated movie release dates. <laughs> uh, I've got some rumored Mandalorian season two titles. All right, great. Sprinkle some salt on these because you know that's what they say, right? Uh, HBO Max might cap off our quarantine and more. Yeah, I was just uh, chatting with a cousin earlier today who lives down in the Florida Keys, and I guess they've just uh, cut off all tourism through the the month of may so it looks like the goalpost keeps getting pushed further and further down we all thought like it was going to be two weeks in march then april snuck along and then i felt like i blinked and april was over this month is going to be like the lost month for me that never actually happened and then now may is coming along and which is bit bittersweet because may is the uh may is like the movie month Mm -hmm. i mean usually uh some of these big movies we talk about on the show like get bumped up a couple days and technically they premiere in april which is kind of in the zone we're in right now but so i'm just kind of like nostalgic for the movies right now that we're just probably not going to see for another calendar year it's funny you mention that because this weekend is the one year anniversary of avengers endgame and Mm -hmm. boy does that feel like it was a decade ago itself oh Um, yeah i know it honestly feels like a 2018 movie in my heart yeah like (laughs) it's it's not been a year since endgame but it really has like it it is and you know right now we're we're on the cusp of what should have been black widow and i'm gonna tell you mike uh this is not in the notes but i was i've been mulling it over the past 24 hours Mm -hmm. i think because we don't have any movies this summer, we're going to have to pull out some old movies for you and me to go over oh, and do some yeah, reviews that'd be, on. That would be great. And, I'd love that. And I got the first I, the first two I think our, our listeners should vote for. Mm-hmm. Um, or unless we just decide to go against whatever they say and do it ourselves. <laughs> the first one, I think, uh, is, is a head-to-head battle of Howard the Duck, Mike. Oh, my gosh. The Marvel movie that couldn't. <laughs> and Or Fantastic Four 1994. That was never released to theaters. So this would be perfect, either one of these, because I haven't seen either of these uh, movies. Uh-huh. Uh, obviously, I know a lot about them, and I've even seen like plenty of like video essays and whatnot for Howard the Duck. So I'm aware of everything that's in there. I've seen those well, those duck boobies. <laughs> what, what is what is, <laughs> exactly? Uh, I have I have it on Blu-ray right here. I'm looking at it right now. Um, what would be interesting also is if we do Fantastic Four. I want to watch. I, I, I say I'm going to do this, and I never get around to doing it. Uh, is the uh, doomed uh, Fantastic Four documentary about the making of the Fantastic Four or, and, oh, and that, how it never released. That'd be a fun back-to-back. With, we could kind of talk about the documentary in step with uh, the movie. Yeah, because it is, it's free on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, I think that would be something interesting to do. So, uh, I mean, I can go either way on these. I think having these movies that have never been released... or Well, how the Ducks released, but people like to forget it was released um, versus <laughs> this. And you've never seen them. Um, so I think it'd be fun to do that. So if anyone has any preference over which ones they like us to do, do let us know. But I'm glad you're down for this, Mike, because I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to pitch it to them. We're going to see how this goes. But speaking, speaking of Avengers Endgame, uh, I, I've been like slowly like building up this anticipation, anticipation inside my body where I want to go back and I want to rewatch a lot of MCU stuff because it's obviously apparent that we have the time. <laughs> And I, I love the I I love the the uh, super emotional moments that are in Avengers Endgame, but I've been um, I've been keeping them from myself. People have been putting like compilations up online of all of the best moments of like these kind of last two Avengers movies, but I have abstained because I want to experience them again uh, when I stream them at home. So I know a lot of people are out there kind of like celebrating the anniversary with uh, some cool videos, but I'm abstaining. I want to I want to experience it again when I watch it. Yeah, I, I mean I'm I'm interested to maybe not do a Marvel rewatch because god dang that's a lot of movies, Mike. Um, <laughs> but a lot of people have, you know, um this it seems when there's downtime like this, a lot of like 
concept conceptual artists or pre-production people like hey here's like the original script for iron man that we were working with and it's it's like coming out and they're like here's an alternative doctor strange where his um whole cape was blue and everything like that i'm like this all this <laughs> well, coming out of the woodwork because like they're going through their files but. yeah well hollywood can't send the goon squad after these uh after these writers because everyone's quarantined so they're like well they can't get to me now i'm just gonna release all of this stuff yeah, exactly. So I think I think it's cool for that. But I mean, in, in game anniversaries this week, it doesn't feel like it. I mean, by the time we hopefully get to Black Widow, it'll have been over almost a year and a half since we had a Marvel mm-hmm. movie, and everyone was like, "Oh, the fatigue, the fatigue." There's no, there was no superhero fatigue to begin with because In Game was the number one movie, and Spider Man was the number one Sony movie last year. But I think it'll be nice to have a little breather and then come back strong because um, we'll talk about it. Uh, Twenty twenty two is looking to be a huge movie year for for superhero people Uh uh-huh but in the meantime if people are maybe looking for some other movies to watch that aren't superheroes or maybe something they never dive into you uh have have been watching a few yourself uh including uh one of my um from one of my i I like wes anderson i like fantastic mr fox better than this but isle of dogs is still an awesome movie to watch visually yeah yeah, like the, like I said uh, earlier, this is a great time to catch up on stuff you missed. Uh, speaking of 2018, Isle of Dogs was a, a film that dropped in 2018, and we uh, we watched it the other night. And I, you know, I, I believe you told me a couple years ago when it came out that you felt like uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox was the superior uh, stop motion Wes Anderson film, and I would I think I would pretty much agree with you there. Uh, after yeah. my wife watched it, it was pretty pretty late in the evening, so we went in bed and we laid down in bed and we just started like, why did they do this in the movie? Why did they do that mm-hmm. this didn't really make any sense uh it seems like a, a a wes anderson film with maybe too many cooks in the kitchen right and um also from like a character design point of view i was kind of confused why like the main pack of dogs in the film all pretty much looked the same like they're all like the same height they're all like kind of like medium dogs i'm like you have all of these different these different uh dog breeds that you could play with and wes was just like no they're all gonna be like normal just like uh, medium sized brown dogs so uh yeah it was all right though i mean uh, wes anderson films are always amazing to watch just because the 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 quirks the quirky things he likes to do with the camera the staging a lot of proscenium setups so i i wouldn't tell people not to watch it but right. i was a little let down by it yeah i think here, here's one of the things that a lot of people don't know with fantastic mr fox that movie was made like uh most movies are being made right now wes anderson never stepped on set because it was made in france all the uh-huh. stop motion was and they video called into report stuff so i don't even really consider him the director of that movie more like a co-director based on the people who were doing the movie in europe at the time um and i think you know based on the success of that and fun like this is the same visual style as that uh the, even the fur of the animals looks the same and i'm like this is cool and all but I, it just feels like a like hey we're just kind of piggybacking off that style a little bit rather than coming out with something new and original like fantastic mr fox was at the time so uh it's not bad it's just not my um not my favorite of, of his movies by by far yeah yeah wes anderson he has a he has a new he has a new film coming out yeah. uh well it was supposed to be this year who knows where it's going to be coming out now so uh, if you want to check out isle of dogs you'll probably have to rent it or buy it digitally because it was streaming but unfortunately not anymore because once a once a director has something in the works again usually that gets pulled from streaming services because yeah. there are no people looking for it exactly they they know they know people want it they were like hey you want this too bad uh, and that's that's how they do it. However, I, you know, that's the best part about Disney Plus right now. Um, <laughs> they they're not going to pull their own movies when their next one comes out. They might promote it even more. Yeah, um, I think what Frozen one now Frozen two was already out when Disney Plus launched. But like, there are some movies that like, they're going to be pushing. Like, hey, here's the original. Go, go check it out. Um, also, you were able to catch uh, another uh, movie this week in a comedy, right? Uh, uh, another Seth Rogen movie for your <laughs> yeah. We've been I feel like we've been kind of accidentally going through Seth Rogen's catalog here in the house, and uh, his most recent film, Long Shot, is actually a really good cohab ca- cohabitation movie, if you will. If you are stuck in the house with uh, with a significant other who has a who has a preference for like a romantic uh, comedy or romance movies, I would give Longshot a chance, actually. It's uh, streaming on HBO right now, uh, which will soon be HBO Max, so it might be good to get on top of that. Uh, but it was really funny. Uh, there was kind of, you know, the rom-com storyline, but also this, just some uh, good lowbrow uh, Seth, uh, Seth Rogen humor and 
his uh, infectious weird laugh, and there's some gross out stuff in it too. That's uh, that's pretty funny and shocking. But yeah, give a uh, give long shot a uh, chance. Some solid jokes in there that my wife and I were quoting over the weekend. That's also got um, I can't think of her name. Uh, she was in the new Mad Max movie. Oh, Charlize. Charlize Theron, right? That's mm-hmm. the, yeah, she's the, the star of that, and um, that's the one where like I guess he's a writer for her, right? Like he's writing. <laughs> Speaker yeah, she's uh, she's she's a politician, uh, and they uh, stumble across each other. And he was a reporter, and now he's going to be a speechwriter. So yeah, it's a uh, it, things things turn out pretty good in the film. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. That's good. And so I'm glad you'd recommend that. Uh, however, this is going to lead us right into our first topic of the week, Mike. Uh, we both watched a movie, the same movie. I mm-hmm. actually got to it before Mike because we both watched it this morning. I'll tell you that right now. Um, <laughs> Extraction on Netflix with uh, Chris Hemsworth, and I don't remember the director's name. I need to pull this up unless you already have it pulled up. No, I don't. Oh. But this was a this was a brand new movie, Chris. You yep. just said there's no movies coming out this summer, and technically this is a brand new movie released uh, directly to Netflix that mm-hmm. we're bringing to your ears right now. Uh, this. This popped up on most people's radars because it's executive produced by the Russo brothers. And, and stars uh, Chris Hemsworth. Stars Chris Hemsworth, <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, 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 I don't know about you, but when I watched it uh, this morning, it was uh, trending number one on Netflix, which, you know, that's in their own ecosystem. So who knows exactly what number one means for Netflix. But Netflix is pretty big, last I checked. So a lot of people are checking this movie out this weekend. Yes, it's directed by Sam Hargrave. And the only reason I bring this up is because he is known for his stunt work on uh, most Russo Brothers movies. Uh, Mm -hmm. He uh, was in Captain America. He did the Captain America Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. He actually is, him and his brother were the Captain Americas um, fighting, you know, America's ass scene. And -hmm. then they digitally replaced um, their faces with Chris Evans uh, because Mm -hmm. of the stunt work. So uh, that's pretty cool to know that he was actually one of those Captain Americas we were watching in that movie. Um, so we both watched it. We've not talked about it. Mike didn't even know I watched it until we got on the, on the <laughs> microphone right here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and ask you, because you've been hyping this up. You've been trying to get this hype <laughs> train going for, for Extraction. And uh, what did Mike Royer think of this movie? Yeah, well, spoiler free, trying to get the hype train going, just because I feel like the hype train has died uh, this summer, so I just kind of want to see it running again. You know, it's a nice looking piece of automotive uh, technology, and I just kind of want to see it moving, no matter what it's moving for. So, uh, but Extraction ended up being um, an okay ride, if you will. I would say it's uh, better than average, uh, a competent film, uh, probably one of the better action movies I've seen on Netflix. I was kind of comparing a lot of this to Six Underground because that was like the last big budget action flick that I saw on Netflix, which was honestly very bad. So uh, it was nice to see uh, a somewhat competent action film. Um, I would think if this came out in theaters during a during normal times, if you will, it you know people might not be talking about it that much. Uh, but it has some pretty exciting stunt work in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the story kind of starts off a little straightforward and then it finds some kind of twists and turns um, but ultimately it doesn't really weave a very interesting world uh, but I have to say the setting was nice and different um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong this film uh, takes place in uh, Bangladesh right? Uh, um, something like that They don't. It, it feels like it's a fake kind of area I don't know if the name's real or not but probably It's. I think it's B- Dhaka Bangladesh if I remember correctly okay, yeah. it, uh, the only reason I bring it up because it was a little confusing because it, the movie's about rival drug lords and Chris Hemsworth gets caught in the middle but one of the drug lords is from India mm. and the other one is from Bangladesh uh, so I kind I looked it up on the map just to make sure I I knew where Bangladesh was and I was like okay, I was right it's it's just like right next to India so uh, they would clash but it was kind of nice seeing a different setting you I feel like a lot of these kind of action style movies over the last decade have all been in like you know the Middle East or they've been in Saudi Arabia or who knows maybe yeah. even like China so it was kind of nice to kind of just see a different part of the world uh, unfortunately it there seems seems to be a lot of innocent bystanders or at least people that are just doing their job that end up getting like mm-hmm. very savagely killed which kind of is a little uh, off-putting so i just kind of had to switch my brain off for that part of the movie uh or for those sections um 
And I would also, when I was watching this film, I would compare it to John Wick, uh, just because this is another stunt person directed film. So I have to say this, the stunts I would say were pretty on, on par, you know, different types of fighting styles. Uh, I would say John Wick is, uh, a little bit scrappier. Uh, uh, he, you know, he gets kind of down in the dirt a little bit more and he's fighting different styles of people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the action was good. The story was serviceable. Um, uh, I hope the director moves on and does some other things. It seems like a good starting point for him, you know? Like, if this is the first movie any person's ever directed after a career in stunts, I would say, you know, good job. Uh, I, I feel like I never have a consistent way I review movies. Sometimes it's just a thumbs up. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, go check this one out when it hits uh, Redbox or when it's streaming for free. Obviously, it's streaming for free already, so what do I say? So if I had to grade it, you know, I would say like a solid B. Maybe leaning towards a, a B plus, but uh, you're not gonna you're not necessarily wasting your time. Uh, I didn't feel like it, it was a movie that was dragging on. I stayed compelled, and there was a nice little kind of like mid movie cameo I would say from another American mm. actor that I forgot was in the film uh, because I think yeah. they might have popped up in the trailer yeah. at one point in time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, it's kind of weird. Uh, there's not a whole lot of enthusiasm attached to this review, but I had a I, but I was entertained, so I guess I'll leave it at that, Chris. Okay. I would say I'm I'm about on par with you, but probably a little less. So mm -hmm. I think this is a very fast paced movie. It doesn't let up, but it suffers from a couple um, things. I would I would say if I was going to rename this or, or liken it to something else, this is Call of Duty the movie, Mike. <laughs> if, if if you are playing a Call of Duty game right now, the newest one even the Modern Warfare game um, that we play and do the single player, this is exactly Chris Hemsworth character is exactly what you'd be playing in that movie. Mm -hmm. um, like he, he's he he has the bloodshot syndrome where nothing can stop him. Um, he he kind of goes against every. I'm going against all the rules, and I can shoot everybody before they can shoot me. Um, no matter how many people are there. So I'm like, this is a little nah, unbelievable at, at times for that. And I think you know, I think it has a good time. There's an exactly an 11 minute and 30 second scene that this movie is worth the all the other wait for. Uh -huh. um, I will tell you this right now, Mike, and it's not a spoiler, but you will see this 11 minute and 30 second exactly. I timed it and looked it up <laughs> uh, scene um, that is just fantastic uh, that showcases, I think, the director's um, Sam Hargard, his stunt work that he's done and uh -huh. camera work. Um, beyond that, I don't know if he really got any good performances out of any other the actors. Um, uh -huh. So I don't know if he's a good director or just good at action. Um, and I feel this story that this is set on. Uh, there are characters who just show up. Um, there's um, a lady named uh, Nick um, who just kind of shows up and is has, like, at the beginning and the end, and I don't know what's going on with this lady, and I'm like, where is she from? Why does it matter? What is happening? And, um, yeah, we'll talk about it later, but I think the ending in this movie was pretty, pretty not satisfying as well in, in a way. Uh -huh. So we can talk about that. We'll do some spoilers. I think, I, again, I think the action scenes were great. Um... Chris Hensworth, you know, again coming out of a, uh, you know, what was the last thing he was in? Thor, was it was it in game? Or did he do something yeah, it then? it may have been in game. Yeah. Um, he, he did. A, I mean, this is a this is a high quality Netflix movie. Um, what I would expect this is what I would expect to come out in January normally in theaters. Um, actually, you know, kind of kind of delivers here in April because nothing <laughs> there's nothing competing against it in in theaters. Uh, I really liked. I, I again, I'm going to agree with you. I think the world, these these the city they're in, that they're this whole thing takes place in, feels lived in, and that's rare uh, for a movie. Like there are just tons of people everywhere, everywhere. Everything's going on. At one point, they get into a sewer, and I'm like, I can feel the stench yeah, of the it sewer. Felt gross. <laughs> it, like I'm like, this is a real world, and this this like this is really happening. Uh, however, there are some some things. If you watch the trailer, the point is, you know, again. Chris Hemsworth is hired to get this kid out of a city. Um, I'm like, why did they not try to disguise this kid more? They're just walking down the, the middle of an empty street. I'm like, they're going to find him. Like, th this is not very smart at times. But I'm like, it serves the plot and, and goes forward. So, um, yeah, I think I think it's... I mean, I don't regret watching it. I think uh, I expected more out of something from the Russo brothers a little bit more. Especially since it was written by Joe Russo. Um but you know we 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 do what we can uh, in these times, and I think <laughs> yeah. I think it's if you were I'm like yeah you can watch it it's pretty it's pretty all right so 
Um, so from here, Mike, I think we jump into some spoilers. Spoiler light, because I don't think there's any huge reveals or surprises in this. But if you want to jump ahead, we have time codes. If you want to listen, you know, go ahead. Um, yeah. Or, or, I think or go watch I- it. <laughs> Yeah, I think this honestly will just be uh, pretty brief. You know, like like when you're talking about uh, building this world around it, uh, John Wick really benefits off the idea of there's this fantastical uh, alternate reality where there's assassins around every corner and uh, they all live by this code and John Wick has to fight all of them. So uh, John Wick is basically signed on to this uh, signed on to this path in his life that people are going to try to kill me, I'm going to try to kill them. And when he and when we see him kill other assassins on screen, we're not really feeling any sort of moral guilt. You know, he's just killing other people that kill people. Mm-hmm. But throughout this movie we see Chris, Chris Hemsworth kill a lot of like um, um, just cops, cops. Yeah. <laughs> that are that, you know, I, I you could sus- suppose that say some of these cops are dirty but like some of them are just like beat cops just doing what their boss tells them to do and like Hemsworth is just like running down hallways like shooting them in the face and like breaking their arms and Mm -hmm. it just it felt pretty brutal because uh, I you know maybe there could have been like a one off line where somebody said oh all the cops in this city are crooked they're all bad but you know that just seems like a lot of character and story development that that they they didn't want to take time to do and also we don't know a whole lot about Chris Hemsworth's back background of his character uh the first action scene we see in this movie he kills somebody by pushing their face into a uh into like a pretty gruesome uh rake and it's just kind of like is this the type of person chris hemsworth is this seems very brutal for him to kill people like this when he just killed like four people by choking them to death you know why couldn't he just choke this guy also so it seemed a little inconsistent of just how like brutal and how savage he was uh as opposed to him just being efficient and trying to get the job done so it seemed like they weren't really sure uh what they wanted his character to be uh, obviously, he had like a tortured past because his, you know, his son died, and you know, of, of cancer. His son died of cancer, <laughs> not like so, anything like tragic. Like no, like nobody came back and got revenge on his kid because of uh-huh. his work. He was just in, mil- in in Afghanistan doing military work, and his son got yeah. cancer and died. Like I, I feel like that is sad. That is tragic. But how? How does that affect? Like it's just a. Th- it feels like a throwaway line in the movie when he tells the kid at, at his bedside table. And I was like, I thought there'd be more to this. But. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we could have benefited from maybe um, maybe something in the very first act. We kind of see just a normal mission that he's on because he seems to be he seems to be running with this crew that's like a professional uh, mercenary crew. They they obviously have funds. They have helicopters. They have other employees that specialize in other things. They have like satellites for communication and GPS. Mm. So like I would have liked to maybe just kind of seen some like inner office banter or just something to show that like oh they're a crew and they know each other because we start to see some uh, coworkers die throughout this movie and yeah. nobody really seems to care or bat an eye. Uh, right. So <laughs> exactly like they're like hey, what about G? He's dead. All right, that's yeah. the last right. thing we ever well, hear of him. I, I will say the guy who played uh, Saju, um, who I'm calling um, uh, Middle Eastern John Travolta. A uh, blood face? That's what I call him. Well, he has the John Travolta <laughs> face, but he also has the hair from Pulp Fiction, um, oh. who has like a really interesting, like he's betrayed. He didn't pay them because he didn't have the money, Not, but like, why did he have to go kill them? He didn't have to kill them. Like before, I don't know. It was weird that he killed all these people and then he's still a good guy. Like, yeah, he, he had redeeming qualities. Like he was trying to do something, but like. What would happen to his family in the end? Did they run away and hide with the money, like he said? Well, because yeah, I, I would assume since he didn't come back within that time frame, they they had but, run off. But, but he, it they was only confusing. had to run off because the guy in prison didn't get his kid back, but he did get his kid back. Right? Yeah, yeah, it is confusing because we don't really know how much power because obviously I don't know a whole lot about the <laughs> geopolitics of the region. But yeah. if you look at India on a map, India is gigantic. So if you are the biggest drug drug lord, drug lord in India, you got to have resources out the wazoo, even if you are in prison. The guy even makes a point to say, what, you think I can't do anything to you just because I'm stuck behind these bars? And then he's going up against the biggest drug lord in Bangladesh. Like, if you just look at the countries and the sizes, like, Bangladesh is much smaller than India, so I was just having trouble grappling with the mm. sizes of the operations and what their resources uh, <laughs> were. I mean, really, the the joy the joy of this movie is just an excuse to get the stunts yeah. out in front of you. Right, 
exactly because like you see no drug there's no drug actions going on in this movie you mm-hmm. you see none of the drug cartel happening you see their leaders um and then like the guy the the dad once he says you know that line you just said you never see him again like mm-hmm. he, you never find out if he finds out his kids alive and like hiding in Australia or wherever like you never see him again so what's the resolution with this dude and like yeah, this and whole they- thing and the the scene where David Harbour cameos, yeah. he makes a point to say that this kid is dead no matter what. If you take him back to his dad, if he gets kidnapped, the, the best thing you can do for this kid is shoot him while he's sleeping upstairs. And then they don't really resolve that point because he just ends up going back to his dad and he just goes back to private school and I guess well, he's fine. Well, no, that, that he's not in India anymore. He's in like Australia because notice all the white people. Like he's not oh, in the is, same is country. What, yeah, is that what was happening there? I, yeah, I guess they, they got him out of the so country, it, and then like, so is he under like witness protection? Or yeah, something, yeah, pretty I much. Guess? Yeah, and then you know, yeah. is Chris Hemsworth alive at the end? They they did yeah. an inception on us. <laughs> the only thing I was thinking, I was like, oh man, you got shot through the neck and you fell in. In, in uh, water. What, all they I consume is an extremely dirty river, uh, based on the sewer that you were briefly Dude, in earlier. It's like you got infections. You for were, sure. You're right in my mind because like when he had his arm like busted open and they're in the sewer. Yeah. I'm like, don't get in the water. Uh, don't, don't lean against like there's literally a bug on the wall. Don't lean. Don't the get. Wall. Don't get. Don't don't get your arm in that in that sewer. I, I have to. Dead. I have to say the the best part of the movie for me because it was the most original and I hadn't quite seen anything like it, but it was very enjoyable. Was watching him fight what they call the Goonies from Hell, yeah. which was just Chris Hemsworth versus what was it maybe like five or six, <laughs> like six kids, thir- thirteen or fourteen year olds. Yeah, and it was just great to see his a. Um, to see his restraint and then also him just slapping these kids because he's so big and he's so strong. He could probably kill one of these children with, uh, with a punch that he would, that he would deliver to a normal adult. So he just resorts to slapping them and like hitting them with car doors. And I, I have to say the choreography was really funny. It was really great. And it's just like he, and you can tell just like a a character in that situation would be kind of riding this fine line of just like, obviously I can beat up all these kids. But I do need to dispatch them quickly because they do have guns and they're probably stupid and they might shoot me. So I'm going to slap them as hard as I can, which will hopefully render them useless uh, and won't kill them. So I really enjoyed that scene. Yeah, that was cool. And I, I'm going to go ahead and say before, you know, before we wrap this up on this, the 11 and a half minute single take scene. Oh, great. Um, I was expecting five minutes at most. Mm-hmm. And then it just kept going. Mm-hmm. It went on so, so long I got bored with it and then came back at the end. I was like, okay. I get, I get it now, but like, when's it going <laughs> to end? But like, it just kept going because him and, um, you know, uh, Bloodface, as you call him, um, <laughs> just going after each other the whole way through that town was just awesome. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't just all necessarily like fighting choreography. There was just like stunts. There was traversal. There was moving from A to B to C well, to D. The camera, people getting hit by cars. <laughs> the camera went out a window, in a window, into a car, riding along with the car, outside of the mm-hmm. car again to show everything. Uh, you know, and you know, he, that there's a scene in the trailer where he throws the kid across the rooftop and, mm-hmm. uh, this part of it. And then up to the final shot where they jump out of a car, a moving car, that was the last shot of it. It was quite, quite the journey. Um, so mm-hmm. it, it I, my guess is they wrote the whole, like they wrote that first. I'm like, every, everything around this movie has to revolve around this 11 and a half minute chase. Yeah. So, I think it just goes to show you that if you're a professional at any kind of one of the many aspects that goes into a film and you can elevate that high enough, you know, people will forgive a lot of the stuff that's around it. So I would easily recommend extraction mm-hmm. just for, like you said, that, that extended 11 minute, minute action scene, the hilarious fight where he fights the quote unquote, uh, goonies from hell. Yeah. Uh, even the bridge scene, at the end I would say there was some there's some tension there for sure you get to see some kind of call of duty action where yeah. his uh, where his coworker comes in with like a sniper rifle and I'm just like oh I feel like I'm in war zone right now well um, uh, <laughs> I think the only thing again before we end up the goonies from hell the kid who shot him was one of the goonies in, through the mm-hmm. night. what happened to him in the end I get it the main guy you know the chick came back and killed the big drug lord because I'm like why is she standing at a urinal uh, oh, and then she killed him. Uh, and then, um, but what happened to the kid? Yeah, we're just we're him. just not we're just not meant to know. I, I don't think the movie is supposed to be as deep as we want I, it to well, be. I just wanted a little bit more, just a hair more of like closure. Like, where do these people end up? Do they get their comeuppance? 
do they get their their happy ending? And you know, I'm, I I don't think there is a happy ending, but like, I'd probably watch a sequel. Yeah, I'd probably watch it. You know what? This is this is all improvements. The way I look at it, as long as a uh, Netflix action selection starts to uh, starts to slowly improve like this, I'll be happy. Yeah, and thank God for for picking on not you know Michael Bay for this one. So. <laughs> there's extraction. There's the spoilers. All right, we're gonna jump out of spoilers. We're gonna talk some regular stuff now. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. James Gunn put up Meredith Quill's playlist. Mm-hmm. Her favorite songs, and these are songs he considered for the soundtrack of the Guardian movies. And he's talked about hundreds of these before. Um, so there's a lot on here. And I've listened to some of it this week. Uh, but what's interesting is, you know, he has said that, you know, these definitely won't be, these. there's no guarantee these will be in the next movie, but there's no guarantee they won't be either. So these, so you're saying these are a mixture of songs that uh, James Gunn enjoys, but also songs that didn't quite make the cut for Volume One yeah, and Volume Two. Right. So mostly, mostly that second part. Uh, he mm-hmm. he had six, six hundred, seven hundred songs. I don't think they're all on here, but he said he had hundreds of songs picked out before they narrowed them down to the songs we did get. So um, I think these are the remnants, and he just was able had had some time to to make that playlist of those songs now. Well, it's a good thing James Gunn has uh, the Disney Marvel budget behind him because uh, licensing music is very expensive for films. So it sounds like he's got carte blanche uh, and he can just put whatever he wants in these. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they, they worked out in the first two. I'll tell you what, I was uh, I listened to my I have the Guardians one soundtrack on vinyl and I've been listening to it this week in the other room. So I'll tell you that uh-huh. those are it's it's albums when music when you want to listen to the soundtrack of a music of a movie that's really good like on, on uh-huh. repeat so I, I i applaud them uh and uh yeah one of the bigger weirder announcements this week i'll tell you right now mike is venom 2 subtitle being re- revealed along with a new release date um the title is let there be carnage <laughs> quite a drum roll there for uh venom yeah yeah always strange uh, to talk about venom on the show just because the only thing that kind of keeps us excited is just the mere fact that andy circus mm-hmm. is directing it you know if it was just anybody else any sort of kind of like no name you know uh unexciting director who knows if we would even be able to stretch any venom topic more than 30 seconds without you know footage or a trailer to analyze but uh you know, it's it's out there. It's coming. Let there be carnage. A lot of people out there wanted it to be maximum carnage, and just because it seemed to make the most. It seemed to be the the easiest title to grab from. But also, don't you feel like something with the title of maximum carnage deserves to be earned? Like we don't even know if Woody Harrelson's going to be a good Cletus Cassidy. We don't even know if they're going to be able to pull off carnage. So maybe don't go ahead and blow off a very well known title like maximum carnage on a movie that we might not even like. You know. Re- Reserve something like that. Maybe come back around in ten years and use it, and maybe it'll be, it'll be much well, uh, more. Well, exactly. And Maximum Carnage, you know, is something like if you put that on a movie title, right, and you ruin that movie, that title's ruined everything forever. Um, <laughs> so if people love Maximum Carnage because it was a video game for Super Nintendo, mm-hmm. uh, I believe they did a, a story arc in the comic books around that same time too. Uh, more recently, in the past five years, I think they did one called Minimum Carnage, where they <laughs> sent Carnage to the um, the subatomic universe, whatever that is in Ant-Man, uh, the quantum fun, realm. F- fun fact, my brother and I purchased our copy of Maximum Carnage with uh, Kool-Aid box tops. Oh. Uh, we had to get quite a few of them in order to get the game, but I do remember that's how we acquired it. So when it like showed up in the mail, we were so psyched. But then when we put it in the into the, uh, I believe it was Sega Genesis, uh, the game was extraordinarily hard, and I don't yeah. think we even made it past like the second level anyway. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, I think "Let There Be Carnage" is okay. I get it. It's not the best name in the world, but I'm like, I agree with you. If the next, like, maybe the next one is Venom Three or a crossover movie where they they pull all their B-list villains or making movies in into Maximum mm-hmm. Carnage and include the Carnage because in Maximum Carnage you fight the symbiotes, right? The his his the the Carnage children. Which is like they have maximized. Inflation. They are maximizing the number of symbiotes. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of carnage going on here. And this one, I think, you know, they got this venom and carnage. I, I think, yeah. Um, so yeah, give it give us some time. I agree with you, Mike. Um, but they've moved this movie from October of this year to June of next year, June 25th, 2021. And let me tell you how many times I've updated this superhero <laughs> slate list. That's just a text list of all the movies this week. 
Um, this was the first one. It was a separate announcement. So if you want to go look at how 2021 is just loaded, just so loaded right now, <laughs> uh, and 2020 is looking weak, weaker and weaker by the minute. Um, but yeah, June 25th, Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. Uh, it's kind of right now the only big summer movie going on right now. Um, in the middle of the summer. Um, uh-huh. you know, there's no nothing in July at all, which is weird because... Um, wasn't Spider-Man 3 originally in July of next year? It's not anymore. Um, they moved it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man 3 was pushed back from July, I believe, 15th, or around July 4th, whatever, to November 5th of next year. Everything is moving. I think this is this is a telltale sign that people are not going to be going back to the theaters in a large enough capacity to turn a profit I think for the whole calendar year of 2020, Mm. I saw something recently that said AMC is not going to consider reopening theaters until they start to reach the release date of bigger films. So I think they they mentioned um, Tenet coming out later this year and then also... yeah, Maybe it was something else. I think it was possibly another December release maybe it was dune i was thinking of but it seems like even the movie theaters are just like hey we're not just going to open back up just because we can well, open back up we want to make sure there's an appetite alive but, or we're still basically but, opening up the theater for no reason well the problem is there's no movies what do you put mm-hmm. in the theater right now if they exactly. open up what do you put in nothing um i'd rent it out and go play video games and it might uh, let me <laughs> but you know spider-man i don't know if spider-man 3 is being pushed back i'll tell you this not because of the, no one's going to the theaters of july of next year it's because They've not made this movie yet. Uh, I don't think movies will get back to making productions until July of this year, at, at the at the earliest. Um, sadly, so uh, Spider Man's took over, uh, moved to November fifth, uh, which used to be the slot of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, <laughs> which we just talked about what last week and the week before. Like, yeah, this movie's every- been moved all the time. <laughs> Everything's shifting. It's just um, it's just like a stack of dominoes. Uh, once one starts to go, all the others have to be pushed. Uh, it's like a sliding scale. What other what other analogies can I use? If one moves, the other one has to. Right. So what's and then we're gonna talk about this here in a second. So Doctor Strange was pushed back four months to March twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. This was not a date on any calendar for a, a movie that was already held. This is a brand new date that the Disney and Marvel have slotted in. Uh-huh. Um, this, and again, this was previously November 5th. So, so four, four months directed by Sam Raimi. He confirmed last week himself. Um, this is less than a month after, or not less than a month, one month after, um, Thor, uh, love and thunder. We'll talk about it here in a second. And also two months before, uh, black Panther. So we're going to get three, four months of just Marvel movie, Marvel movie, Marvel movie. Well, yeah, it seems like they're going to have to get them out um, just because if they're making an interconnected universe that's not just movie theater wise, but also on the streaming side of things in Disney Plus, like every time we talk about Doctor Strange and the Mm -hmm. Multiverse of Madness, we talk about uh, the WandaVision show that has to come out because those two things are interconnected. So, you know, how many like is Disney Plus going to start delaying or shifting things around on the streaming side of things to make sure things line up, which is not saying it's something that they can't do but is it is a little bit of a risk just because even before uh the pandemic happened we were talking about how 2020 uh, is a little light for disney plus at least until the end of the year until we start to get some of the premium content that we really want to watch well i think um you know we, we we say that but they've not finished filming any of the shows so we have to look at production schedules as well will they delay it because they're not done or will they delay it because they need it to line up I don't mm-hmm. think lining up means as much as we think it does sometimes because I look to Black Panther as an example. Um, wasn't it literally the movie before Infinity War, right? It was Black Panther, then Infinity War. Uh-huh. But Black Panther took place immediately after Civil War, which came out like two years prior. So um, with the time jump they did do in, in the MCU, will it even matter when they come out? Because it all leads to the same place at the end of the day. I'm- you know what's kind of funny now that I think about it? Uh, thinking about you know productions of all of these movies and streaming series, I think about this, the uh, behind the scenes for uh, Spider-Man Far From Home where uh, they were uh, quote-unquote filming the scene where uh, Spider-Man is fighting Mysterio in that kind of empty warehouse where all the crazy visuals happen. And 100% of that 
is all CG. Like spy, like there was no building. Uh, not even in the. I'm not even talking canon in the MCU. Like physically on set, like all of that was built in a computer. And it makes me wonder if uh, Marvel and Disney are going to be leaning on that a lot more for the at least these movies and TV shows that are interrupted right now. I mean, if you have a superhero that is mostly closed. Uh, in a in a costume, that means most of them can probably be recreated in a computer. So I'm I'm almost curious if there's a situation where it's just like, oh, we have WandaVision like 80 percent done. Should we just ask uh, some people in like a dark office in front of computers to finish like the last like 20 percent of the visuals and visual effects? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe this is a truth that we're never going to know because the visual effects are getting so good now you can't even tell the difference. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, I think Scarlet Witch and the Vision is, is a bad example because I think you need the actors there for a lot of that. You th- you think you yeah. think you do, but like because Spider Man <laughs> doesn't like all of Spider Man's outfits have always been digitally created in the MCU. Like Tom Holland's there for mocap, but he's on a green screen. He's not even on set um, for for some of that. So I think I think that one's a bad example. I, I mean, we'll have to see how that plays off. But what I'm gonna say- I I w- I'm all I'm saying is I'm predicting. I wouldn't be surprised if there's at least one production in Hollywood, whether it's superhero film or whether it's an indie film, that's so close to being done that they just opt to just recreate it all with a computer. Fast I mean, just like when an just like when an yeah exactly <laughs> just like when an actor dies and they have to get the movie out like people like it's so close to getting the movie out we want to get this done so we can just like sell it to netflix or amazon prime and get our money back yeah. so i, I I'm, lo- I'm looking forward that i'm looking for- forward to that headline of seeing who pulls it off well i don't think any large studio will do that um because again they're beholden to stockholders and producers i think smaller films might um you know what what is um the invisible man came out like this you know the the blumhouse films might do that I could totally see them doing like, hey, the next horror movie we have is, you know, nobody's really in, in person. Just film yourself Ooh. on your phone. We'll, we'll clean it up in post. Uh, send us your facial reactions and we'll, <laughs> we'll match it up. Um, but what I'm, I'm going to go back to say this is so Spider-Man is a Sony movie, Mike. Um, uh-huh. It is in the Disney universe, but it, it is beholden to Sony Universal or Sony Pictures release dates and Sony Pictures um, distribution, right? Uh, he just happens to live in the Marvel Universe. Spider-Man taking over a Marvel and Disney date, uh, not just one here, we'll talk about more in a second, leads me to think there's more to their new partnership than we may believe. That we Yeah, it, and also, if you have to imagine like Hollywood as a whole trying to ride out this storm... I mean, who is going to be most equipped for this? It's going to be the the most successful studio out there, which is Disney. So I, I would imagine also uh, maybe Sony's not trying to uh, rub uh, their partner the wrong way here. They're going like, just like, okay, we'll, we'll play ball. You know, it, it seems like somebody had to agree to something in order for a Sony movie to take a Disney slot, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. This is... I mean, so I mean that's why Spider-Man wasn't moved with all the other announced MCU stuff uh, a month ago. It's because it's not a Mar- it's not Disney's call to move that uh-huh. movie. But now they've moved Doctor Strange and put this in place. Obviously, the order of these movies is important um, to them. Some of them. Uh, so Spider-Man obviously needs to take place apparently in this middle for some reason for them to keep moving it around like this. Um, which brings me to the next point: Thor: Love and Thunder. Funny enough, moves forward a week. To February 11th, 2022, uh, which puts it right in time for those Valentine's Day dates. Yeah, it makes me wonder why it wasn't there to begin with. Um, There's some other yeah. Disney movies that moved around, and I think that's why. Oh, you think there is probably a um, just a film that wasn't superhero related that maybe yeah. wanted to have that weekend? Yeah, then they were like, well, we can't get it done now, so it's, it's moved, so that weekend's free. Do you want it? Yeah. Okay. Now you can have it. Uh, yeah, I'm already seeing the promoted Instagram posts and tweets in my feed. You got a Snapchat uh, oh, filter for this? I mean, yeah. Take your take your take your sweetheart to go see Thor: Love and Thunder. Fall yeah. in love with the MCU franchise uh, all over again. Something something for him and something for her. You know, they're gonna yeah. play up these these actors. So uh, I was previously February 18th. It was just a week, uh, but that's not bad. But it now puts it before Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness by by a little over a month and a month and a half here. So. Um, that's interesting. I don't think these will, those two will tie together because Thor is out in space. Um, possibly. Probably Earth because, you know, Jane Foster is going to be playing with that. And Valkyrie's on Earth, right? 
Um, and Doctor Strange, he's going to be doing crazy stuff with, with multiverses and, and madness. So uh, I'm excited with that. Lastly, uh, the, the thing that Mike is the most sad for is Spider-Man Aww. Into the Spider-Verse uh, 2 has been delayed uh, from October to October 7th, 2022. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was like, what, June or something before that? So Yeah, it just keeps getting pushed further and further, which, which is unfortunate. I wonder how much of the push is due to just just the schedule in general getting mixed up or uh, it getting pushed due to uh, difficulties of getting the people together because Spider-Verse has the advantage of being an animated movie, so a lot of that production can still be going on. But the the original Spider-Verse movie, I would say, was pretty... Um, was pretty groundbreaking with a lot of the collaboration and a lot of the interesting new things that they brought to the, Mm -hmm. to the animation medium. And, you know, maybe some of that stuff actually does really work a lot better when you're in an office office with a bunch of people like they had a live DJ scratching to get the, uh, to get the soundtrack for the scene where, uh, Spider-Man's being like pulled behind the train, I believe it was. So it's just like, maybe it's just harder to like find a DJ online and like send them the footage and have them do the stuff. So, well, I mean, a lot of these people who are probably who who have signed up to make this movie are already making other movies. And if those are delayed, and they have to start those back up. Everything's getting pushed back. I think it's mm-hmm. not just not necessarily like, oh, we can't find these people. It's probably because everyone who's already invested in this, you know, Phil Lord, Chris Miller, the writers, the director, um, the animation studios are probably working on other things before they can get to this now. It's just so far away. It, it I, like, e- e- like even like, you know, when an MCU movie is far away, it's not too bad just because I know there's other MCU movies that I can watch along the way. It's just kind of like watching a really good season of television and it's just like, oh, season two is not going to come back for like four years. And it's like, what? No, I want it next year. Mm-hmm. So it's just a bummer. Well, but, you know, they can take as much time as they need. Uh, I, I, I'm I coming at it much like a video game release. If you got to delay it just to make sure it's good you know go ahead yeah i, I wouldn't want to rush this. i don't think i'd even want them to do this you know try to do the animation style remotely because there's so little nuances in it that uh-huh. you know, made the other one so i'm like yeah if they need someone to supervise that like get, get it right but what's also interesting is october 7th was originally a marvel disney release date it's an untitled marvel movie so uh-huh. sony has taken two marvel disney slots off the calendar at this point uh 2022 is crowded it has a uh, reportedly, uh, if you include Spider Verse two, five Marvel movies in it that year. There, um, there you go. That's <laughs> Sony playing playing along, playing along again. Now, hopefully, this is good for the good for the consumer. It might. I don't know if it's bad for Sony. Are they like really really worried of what's going on? But uh, if they're getting dates, that's good for them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why Sony be worried. I mean, they, they had the largest movie. Their Spider Man was their largest movie last year. Um, I, I guarantee you Venom will break a billion again because the first one did, uh, whether we like it or not. Um, but Spider-Verse <laughs> 2 will probably, based on the post-release um, acclaims it got, it's, it, it won an award at the Oscars, did it not? Um, yeah. So, like, I think the second one's going to make even more money. And, um, you know, it being not a December uh, holiday release will also probably help with that. Um, very, very excited for that. But we also have, what's interesting, I, I looked at this, it's Thor, Doctor Strange, Black Panther 2, Captain Marvel 2, and this, Spider-Verse 2, all are sequel Marvel movies. It's the first year we don't have an original Marvel movie Ooh, coming out. So I'm banking on original characters on the Disney Plus side. Uh-huh. So um, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep tabs. You can go visit our uh, SuperheroSlate.com, click on the upcoming releases, and view the whole updated calendar as these come in. Um, right now, currently, we have... Wonder Woman 84 and Black Widow left for this year. Uh, God help us all, Mike. <laughs> God help us all. Uh, Silver and Black, that uh, Sony movie where they're going to make Silver Sable and Black Cat, and they stopped the production like a week or like a day before. Um, the director for that says that the movie could become a limited series on Disney Plus. Well, that would be interesting. Why, why, well, like they would turn the movie into like a series on Disney Plus. Now, why would he specifically mention? Disney Plus and not a Sony production that they send to the highest bidder. 
<laughs> yeah, it's going to be an original series on Crackle because I think technically yeah. Sony owns Crackle. This would be interesting because this shows more and more that Sony is buying into the idea of Disney being the um, being kind of the lead on, <laughs> of, on all of these Spider-Man characters, which is great for me. Uh, I mean, we always we, we always talk about how Spider-Man is like kind of this joint custody situation, mm-hmm. and it seems like Disney is like the more uh, level-headed uh, parent, <laughs> and Sony He's just kind of like the crazy one that's just legally obligated to get to get Peter Parker half of the time of the year. So maybe they're starting to lean back and maybe do three quarters of the time Spider Man's at Disney and only a quarter of the time Spider Man's with Sony. Yeah, I think I think it's one of those things where, you know, you know, after the last rumor breakup, there was probably some behind the thing like, hey, you're gonna get a lot we're gonna pay you some sort of subsidiary to have some more control. You don't have to tell people we have it, but uh-huh. here's some money under the table. We're gonna let give you some feedback and give you a little more direction and we'll let you play nicely with us. My conspiracy is always like corporate espionage. I like the idea that most of the time we're thinking about what's the most logical mm-hmm. thing that's happening here and that's probably the truth. But you know, th- there's always a minute percent chance that, you know, some executives just got dirt on another Sony executive and that's how they were able to like ring <laughs> some more Sony properties. I-, I mean, it's just a total well, conspiracy theory, but it makes things a little bit more fun on my end. You, you can have you can have those dreams. I think um, the Sony president, I think we reported about it like a year or two years ago, wants to sell off the media division because he doesn't think it's making any money and focus Mm -hmm. only on hardware and PlayStation. And instead of selling off, he's like, you know what? You could buy us, but you know, uh, Sony's like, or Disney's like, we don't want to buy you. You, You're you're not that good, but here's some extra money. Uh, Let us us do what we want. Yeah. if, If Sony, if Sony's movie division had to be sold, I would rather it be sold in parts just let Marvel buy uh, the Marvel characters back, and then Sony can just sell out all of its other franchises oh, to no. other studios. Put, put Bloodshot in, in, in the MCU. <laughs> the yeah. only way to save Bloodshot. Yeah, Blood's hot. I mean, that, that's that's what it was, right? Is it Bloodshot? I thought it was Blood's hot because he turns no. red. No. Okay, oh, okay. Chris. Okay. <laughs> all right. Speaking of Disney Plus and things that we enjoy watching, The Mandalorian uh, has been officially renewed for season three because. Why not, Mike? At this point, <laughs> um, they uh, they're working. I I don't know how much of season two has been filmed. Um, I don't know if they can still film it because they have those old those their own LED panel studios that they could probably disinfect really easily <laughs> um, and, and keep it very very skeleton crew like, um, which is cool. But the season two rumored episode titles have landed, uh, and I'm going to tell you take these with a grain of salt, Mike. All right. I don't think they're spoilery. They're very, very vague. Um, mm-hmm. You can you can turn these into whatever you story you want in your head. But I'm going to go through this. I'm just going to give you the eight titles real fast. Yeah. The Search, The Confrontation, The Bounty, The Republic, The Loyalist, The Sorcerer, The Return, The Empire. Four of those really stand out to me. Uh, three of them, I would bundle them all up into one concept of the Republic, the Return, and the Empire. All very kind of titles reminiscent mm-hmm. of uh, the original Star Wars trilogy. So I wonder if maybe they're going to kind of tie into some ideas there. And then the other one that kind of sticks out a little bit is the Sorcerer. Yes. Now, I'm still very slowly, very slowly working my way through the Clone Wars. I'm, I think I'm still roughly about halfway through it. But there, there's some sorcery, some kind of magic-esque stuff that happens on some one-off episodes. And as we know, there is definitely a connection between the Mandalorian and the Clone Wars series. So I wonder if maybe they're going to bring some of those kind of magic-y characters into the fold for the Mandalorian. You need to play more Fallen Order because... Because some of that's in there too. Um, okay. I will tell you, I think the sorcerer is not tied to exactly what you're talking about. I think it's, uh, I think this might be the Ahsoka episode. Uh-huh. Because if you remember, in this takes place after Return of the Jedi. So in the first New Hope, they call Ben Kenobi a sorcerer, that old uh, sorcerer. Yeah, that that was my other idea yeah. too. So I think it's a Jedi kind of thing, and this is someone with a Force powers. Maybe it's Ahsoka, not necessarily a Jedi. Uh, someone's gonna pop up here. I think Chapter Three, the bounty. Do you remember the um, the weird crew he had the one off uh, adventure with? Um, uh, with uh, Bill Burr and uh, some of the other characters. Yeah, yeah, Clancy Brown. I think that's gonna be that episode where they come back. Is mm. the bounty? 
and um, I don't know what the other ones are going to tie into. I think I think these these are fun titles because you can make them whatever you want. I don't feel they're spoilery um, because the Empire has, has of course um, been destroyed by this point, and the Republic is kind of a new Republic. So maybe these are have ties with Moth Gideon uh, and his like wanting to still uphold the Empire kind of stuff. So I don't know. I, I'm excited. These are great eight great titles, and you know I. I, I, I hate um, I hate binging things, but I hate waiting a week between these things. I'm very excited to watch more Mandalorian though. So yes, you think we'll still get it this fall? What's your gut? What's your gut instinct? Uh, my gut instinct says nothing that we want in 2020 is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so just 2021 for everything. I think uh, if if they have to dump extra overtime money into a show, this is going to be one that gets it. Mm-hmm. The hey, we're going to pay you extra for nights and weekends get this wrapped up um as quickly hey, if as they if, i mean i'm sure they've already digitized that mandalorian arbor they don't even need to bring in well, pedro pascal did you <laughs> did you read they'd already started filming before they even hired pedro pascal as a mandalorian oh they did that's great so i don't even know if he needs to be isn't that like the best disinfectant suit there like hey yeah just put on a mask <laughs> under here no one needs and, to know. and also his voice is already modulated underneath that helmet he he is probably one of the few people in hollywood that could just record his lines on an iphone and send it in because they don't really need to have a super high quality disney's pass disney's gonna begin splurge with. on the 50 dollar microphone mike don't worry <laughs> They'll send a PA over to his house and yeah. give him a mask. Yeah, six foot boom pole away. Record <laughs> under this. So we're gonna we're gonna put it through your window, Mister Pascal. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Here's your lines. Uh, go read that one again, but slower. Um, yeah. But what? What did you say? Sorry, I'm 20 feet away. Yeah. There's there's some there's some opportunity here, so I'm excited for this. Uh, let's see what it goes. But the other kind of news, I think Star Wars, they got. I think this got swept under the radar, big time is that they have confirmed there is a female led TV Star Wars series coming to Disney Plus. Uh-huh. And I think this is a spin-off Ahsoka show or possibly a Doctor Aphra show. Uh-huh. Uh the showrunner or the, the the person managing all this, I don't know if they call them the showrunner or not, is uh, Leslie Headland, who is known for her show Russian Doll. Which is great. Russian Doll is on Netflix, and there was a there was a I don't know if it was a rumor or if it was an official announcement, but there's supposed to be more coming from this person to Netflix. I don't know if it's necessarily Russian Doll season two or just something in that vein or in that universe. So uh, maybe they need to wrap up what they're working on with Netflix first before they head over to Disney Plus. But that's definitely a precedent we've seen before. Disney Plus seems to be poaching from wherever it needs to poach because it's got. Got the deep pockets yeah exactly and um you know, th- you know this is great that you know disney's getting these up-and-coming showrunners for great shows i'm like hey you know you i think russian doll that's a female-led show right um mm-hmm. we want the female-led tv series for star wars i think star wars tv shows are the way to go right now uh people probably aren't excited for movies as they once were um they could take a break as they are give us some more shows give us some variety let's go with that um, speaking of uh, Star Wars TV shows, there are only two episodes of The Clone Wars left, Mike, and um, there's some some good opportunities uh, for these last two. I'm very, very excited. I think people will enjoy them. Um, you like, uh, it's not a great time for podcasts as, as we sit here and record one, um, but, but you, you're a big fan of the Marvel um, audiobook slash podcast formats they've been putting out lately with the Wolverine and Wolverine the Long Night. Yeah, the Wolverine podcast has been great. Uh, yeah, over the last uh, what year or two, we've been talking about the other podcasts that they want to push out. Not through Stitcher, though, right? They're using different right. outlets. Right. I believe, uh, I forget who this is. I, I didn't put it. Uh, Serial Box. It's right there. I just didn't capitalize it. It's a company called Serial Box. They put some more. These were They did, they did a deal. I think there's five of them. The first one uh, has been Thor Metal Gods. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to listen to that yet. Um, and I talked to uh, C2E2, the guy who, who was kind of who wrote the Wolverine ones, and he was talking about mm-hmm. more about these. But the newest one, um, Black Widow Bad Blood, will be hitting uh, Serial Boxes this month, April. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought this was cool. There are 14 episodes, and they're narrated by Sarah Natacheni, uh, who voiced the original Ash in Pokemon for the first several, like, seven or eight seasons. Oh, that's some nostalgia right there. Yeah. I got to imagine that they'll be putting on a different voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not I, Ash Ketchum. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she sounds like that at all. Uh, oh my God, Ash Ketchum just uh, in the Marvel universe would be really funny. He would not. He would not make it a second. <laughs> um, but also, they, they they confirmed that the next third series will be Jessica Jones playing with fire for these. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think these. I mean, these are pretty good. I mean, these are good characters. Good 
titles. I like them. What do you, what do you think? I mean, you're going to try to catch yeah. Metal Gods? Audio audio dramas are always great, but uh, I, it's weird. We, we've we talked about this a little bit off, off the record, off the microphone. Uh, podcasts seem to be going in both different directions during this pandemic. Uh, I've, I've seen some people report that their listenership is down mm-hmm. because you don't have as many people taking commutes, but then some people have reported listenership has grown because, you know, what else do people have to do? You know, if they run out of stuff to watch on Netflix uh, and they don't want to just stare at a screen, maybe they'll switch over to a podcast. So... It's hard to say uh, what the podcast industry looks like right now. Um, I know I haven't been listening to a lot of my regular commuting podcasts because I'm at home all the time. But uh, if you guys are out there still listening to us regularly, I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for listening. I, I think you know. Again, we don't rely um, on what was it podcast hits to make uh, advertisement revenue for us. We we pay for all this out of our pocket because we like doing it. And it's mm-hmm. fun, so uh, you know if if uh, we we appreciate you guys sticking with us and enjoying our uh, banter back and forth every week. Um, but yeah, Thor: Metal Gods came out in March. I looked, I just looked it up while we were talking. It came out literally March nineteenth, um, which would have been like at the start of the whole um, pandemic thing. So that's easily why it went under the radar for it. Uh, the Batman. Uh, we're gonna talk some more movie release dates here. Uh, the <laughs> Batman has been pushed back. To October 1st, 2021. It was originally June, so just a couple months. They've been filming this quite a bit. But if this movie is rumored to have the long Halloween theme, will October be fitting for The Dark Knight? Yeah, I mean, that sounds like it would be a good idea. I mean, it makes sense. A big uh, a big Batman movie is going to come out during the summer or it's going to come out uh, around the holidays at the end of the year because it's Batman. Batman's always going to sell tickets no matter who's directing it, yep. no matter who's starring as Batman. So it is going to be kind of strange to go see a Batman movie in October, you know, uh, but yeah, if it is along the same, um, if it is along the same plot lines as the Long Halloween, this could work out really well in their favor. But also, um, did it? Did the It movies come out in October, or are those movies that that technically come out like in September and they want an extra uh, month ahead of time? I think they're like the last weekend of September. Uh, okay, or the uh, first uh, weekend I, of October. It was like it's like a full month until Halloween, not on Halloween yeah. proper. I mean, there is always the added advantage of when you're a big summer tentpole movie that gets shifted to a kind of an off month that you're going to be getting headlines when it comes to box office returns because you're a big ass Batman movie coming out in October. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you're probably going to catch a record for uh, biggest opening October or best uh, grossing October film. So it's got them going for it. You've got to fight. I mean, we've we've always talked about this. October is, is, uh, is owned by Venom right now. Uh, which had which broke a billion dollars. I don't think the last Batman movie broke a billion dollars. So do you think well, people are going to be excited to jump at it with literally well, Batman v Superman? I well, <laughs> well, was the last Batman movie really a Batman movie? Who well, knows? Well, and even before that, Bat the Dark Knight Rises, whatever that third one was of the the Nolan trilogy. I don't think it hit a billion either. Well, if I had to put my money on anything in the world, uh, Venom or Batman, I think I'd put it on Batman. Well, but, uh, we, we were proven wrong with Venom. so <laughs> we, we will see what happens, yeah, we'll, I suppose. We'll see what this October takes. Uh, that also comes along with um, Shazam 2 being pushed back uh, as well from November 4th uh, to November 4th, 2020, from April 1st. So it was originally an April movie. We saw it in April of, what, 2019 last year? Um, and it's now been pushed back to November 4th, 2022. <laughs> I really like the first Shazam, and I kind of wish maybe the dates were flipped for the other Shazam because it was like a Christmas movie. Exactly. There was like snow. There was like snow on the ground, and I'm like seeing it in like uh, the basically the start of summer. So the Christmas mall. I, and yeah, like I I doubt that they do all of that again. Like they keep it in the same holiday season. That would be a funny gimmick though if they just go ahead and say we want every Shazam movie to take place during during the holidays in universe. That would just be kind of interesting. They would really uh, they would make a lot of Christmas list movies uh, if they kept doing that. That would be kind of fun. But eh, it's a shame to see Shazam move because I want to see it. I want to see more Shazam. Zachary Levi is great. Mm. Well, it's not really a shame because you will see it. It's going to take quite a bit longer. That's not like all, that's over. Yep. That's like seven months. Um, which DC takes forever to ed- post edit their movies anyway. So which makes God. no sense at all. <laughs> it almost makes me wonder uh, if this is a secret strategy for the next Aquaman movie. They were just like, ah, we feel a pandemic's on the rise, so we're just going to put that movie way out ahead because it's going to be moved yeah. to that date eventually anyway. Well, we need to perfect the underwater effect, so we don't really need people mm-hmm. here. So. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, this is fine. I mean, whatever she's saying, too, is pushed back. Uh, what's interesting here, Mike, is that another movie has been moved forward a whole month. The Flash, which we've heard nothing about at all, has been moved up to June 3rd, 2022 from July 1st, 2022. Yeah, and honestly, I'm surprised that they even wanted to technically put The Flash in the headlines even for a second because I don't know what happened with that whole Ezra Miller debacle of him like quote unquote choking a fan I guess whatever it was wasn't that big enough of a deal because no one's talking about it anymore it was like trending for like maybe a day but who knows uh if the flash isn't coming out until 2022 I mean that's two years away there's a chance that people would have forgotten that Ezra Miller was ever the flash to begin with if they potentially wanted to recast them i mean they've already they're already they have already recast batman even though it's technically canonically going to be in a different time and universe or whatever but um yeah i'm just surprised that the flash has any sort of official anything happening yeah i mean i don't again i again i never heard anything out of that either so i don't know if it was like some people like well it was just obviously a a gimmick like because when you watch it it's weird it doesn't feel real but you know that ezra miller guy is kind of weird anyway in person but, I mean, he was recently in The Flash, in the crossover this year as The Flash. So he's at least been one of the more recent people to play their, their character um, on something. So uh, I, th- I think I think The Flash will be fine. Um, I don't know who's directing it now. They've gone through a million directors. So, <laughs> Chris, can, can I interject just a really quick uh, steamed broccoli segment? <sighs> this, will, this, this will only take a moment, I swear. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so I, I had just happened to uh, pull up Twitter here just very briefly because we were just talking about trending just uh, moments ago. And for some strange reason, Henry Cavill is trending. So I was like, well, this would be a good thing to look into since we are, you know, talking about uh, DC movies at this very second. And the same thing that always happens on Twitter is happening where you tap on the I when you, you tap on the subject, you look at the top tweets and someone's like, oh, I don't know why Henry Cavill is twending, trending trending. Why is Henry Cavill trending? Why is Henry Cavill trending? What's happening here? So uh, it doesn't matter. I can scroll through all these tweets and I will never find out why exactly Henry Henry Cavill is trending, but he is right now. So uh, there you go, folks. There could be something really crazy going on with this man right now and the Twitter algorithm will never let me know. So if anybody else knows why Henry Cavill is trending on April uh, 26th, uh, 2020, please let me know. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Uh, why, why wouldn't it just tell you at the top? Because it's Twitter, that's why. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> sad. That's very, very sad. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, Mike, is I'm going to add in a little bit of news here that, that's coming out right now because you gave Ooh. me to me. Uh, Green Lantern, the series for HBO Max, um, is going to be produced by Jeff Johns. Oh, um, that's old school, uh, uh, I guess old school uh, DC cinematic. Yes. So he will use his company, Mad Ghost Productions, uh, and um, will be, uh, this is actually the project that was announced with Greg Berlanti and Berlanti uh-huh. Productions. I think they're going to make it, but it will be um, produced by Jeff Johns and, and Mad Ghost. I don't know what this means. How will they split this? Does it mean the the budget's going to be huge and the, they had to get two companies involved here, or what? But I mean that that's a that's a big deal um, because he's also writing the um, Green Lantern core movie for for the DC universe. Yeah, it makes me think that maybe they want to do some interconnectedness. So obviously we only have rumors out there floating around the Green Lantern film. But it seems like a lot of people were assuming that there would be multiple Lanterns. Um, So maybe the series on HBO Max will kind of set up the Green Lantern universe, do a lot of the heavy lifting of the mythos and what a Lantern is and what their powers are. And then once people get connected to that, uh, they'll move on to the Green Lantern movie and then it will be in the same universe. But who knows? It could be totally shifted in time, different characters, different Lanterns, but at least things will be set up, you know? Yeah, so I, I don't know what this means for the Berlanti stuff, but I mean, this is... um, well, well, is this? I don't think this means too late. I mean, just looking at this, art, this article here, it says DC TV producer Greg Berlanti and Berlanti Productions are going to be heavily involved, but I don't know if they're going to even be maybe the... Uh, the, the the header of this now do you think you mean what what does that mean is this to to split it from the CW TV shows to make like, hey Berlanti's involved but this isn't the Berlanti verse kind of thing we talked about this I before. mean 
I mean, who knows? I follow uh, I follow Greg Berlanti on social media, and he, you know, he'll like reshare or tweet, you know, whenever he signs a new deal for a TV show because this man has like a thousand TV shows under his belt. He's probably one of the richest people in Hollywood right now. Uh, but I just saw that just the other day he he signed on to do another show with some like playwright for some sort of dramatic show. So there's a chance that his plate might just be so full that he needs some help. I don't know, um, but I would say this is good news though uh just because it kind of positions the green lantern series a little further away from what they're doing at least in the arrowverse which kind of seems to be dwindling or at least dying or the flame has at least gotten slightly dimmer so maybe this will be a little bit of an invigoration Mm -hmm. yeah and not being tied down to something uh previously done before as Mm -hmm. we've talked about uh, the Lego movies, Universal and Lego ha- Group have entered a five-year partnership to launch new movie franchises. And that begs, brings me to the question, Mike, what's left? That you could Lego-fy? Um, <laughs> this is very strange to me, just because the reason why the Lego franchise even got off the ground was because of Lord and Miller. Uh, Lord and Miller are just hilarious they're awesome. They're awesome filmmakers, and they they're just great in almost every medium it, it, that they dabble in, especially animation. Except Star Wars, but continue. Well, who knows? We never got to see exactly what they would have made. Uh, I don't think but, it would have been better than what we got, but, but continue. Uh, but but all of that happened over at Warner Brothers. So it makes me wonder, because we talked about it maybe last year, that Lego was severing their ties with Warner Brothers. And I thought we were just under the assumptions that they just wanted to get out of the movie business for now because maybe they weren't getting the returns that they want. But I don't know. Maybe this seems like, who knows, maybe Universal approached Lego and was just like, hey, we got some ideas for stuff that we can do with Lego. We're Universal. We got a lot of properties. Uh, doesn't Universal do the Fast and the Furious movies? Yeah, you, maybe the, yeah, that's maybe, what the, maybe they'll do like a fast Lego movie or something like that. Uh, but I would just heed warning that it was Lord Miller that made Lego a thing. And uh, Lord Miller did not make the Ninjago movie, which was the reason why that was weird. But they were involved with all of the halfway decent Lego movies. So well, I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> well, they were producers on the Ninjago. They were producers on every Lego movie that come out of here. So I will say they started the Lego movie franchise. But if you watch Lego movie 2, they run that into the ground. Um, oh, yeah. I, I. But it was at the very least uh, halfway decent. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get maybe even a third of the way decent, man. I mean, did you watch? There's time travel or something in there, right? With Legos under under a dishwasher or washing machine, that thing's <laughs> just not that good. Um, but but anyway, I mean, I don't know if they'll do any. I don't think Universal will take their current. Like, I'm not expecting a Minions move. That's I don't know if they're Universal, but I'm not expecting a Minions Lego movie. But like, I really like their original stuff with like Emmett and all those other characters. Like, why couldn't they? figure out a way to keep that going but not keep but keep it less weird i don't know like, i don't know there was some good stuff there and i'm like ah, what what can you do now with lego like what's, yeah this what's left? Th- yeah this seems like they don't really have any solid concrete ideas this almost just seems like a business decision mm-hmm. like uh lego was just saying like hey our movie rights are up for sale you know we're already making like a crap ton of money off of selling plastic so if anybody wants to make movies let us know and universal well, well, is just like yeah, we could probably make some Lego movies. Let's strike a deal. Yeah, because in Lego Batman, what I would like to see, you know, again, maybe we won't see this, but a Lego Marvel movie. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Because they made all those games. There's like a dozen of those games. So uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to see where they kind of go with this Universal stuff and, and, and go from there. So we'll, we'll knock on wood and see, follow up. Uh, the last topic of the day, Mike, of the week, because we won't be here till next week, is HBO Max. We have a little bit more information here. Uh, we've talked about it in our chat over the week uh, with the May 27th launch date shooting for the end mm-hmm. of May just like they promised they'd hit May um, it will cost fourteen ninety nine a month for new people there are some special promos for AT&T customers people who buy was you have HBO Go right yeah Go or Now uh, well one of them only through cable and the other ones if you pay separately so if you pay that would be, that would be Go yeah so HBO Go if you already have it and you don't pay through iTunes or Android, you buy directly from them, you get it for free. Um, and they unveiled some of their, their fresh content. And um, I was, thir- I, I talked about this. I'm thoroughly impressed with their Looney Tunes content because it is the old 1940s animated style Bugs Bunny in characters. Like they didn't update them to Space Jam versions. 
<laughs> yeah, we were talking about this earlier this week. I would say the catalog that they're launching with is extremely impressive. They have a lot of like Warner Brothers content, uh, the, the obviously all of the HBO stuff there. Um, already so they're going to have a great catalog they're going to have the Miyazaki films that are going to be streaming for the first time mm. ever in the United States for on a you know on a paid streaming service not something you just buy yep. digitally on the and, internet which is something that you couldn't do to begin with either and every I think every Batman and Superman movie and I think DC live action movie um, yeah before so 2020 on there as well yeah so the catalog is extremely impressive, and of course the headlines when it launches is going to be mainly, oh, Friends is finally able to stream again. You can finally watch your friends during quarantine, and there'll be all these articles about like Friends and quarantine and memes and all that stuff, uh, which is good for them because they're not launching with really anything original that mm. I would say is close to spitting distance to The Mandalorian. And I'm not even necessarily saying that they have to, but there's like um, I think the only thing that looks halfway interesting is there's a, there's like a new Looney Tunes show that's launching. Yep. And then I think there's also an original series with Anna Kendrick attached, which I thought was just kind of funny because she also had an original Disney Plus thing that launched when Disney Plus launched. So I was like, she, I, she's I, cheap I, right every, now. Yeah, I was like, is every streaming service just hiring Anna Kendrick to launch their service? Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I was a subscriber through iTunes, so I canceled my iTunes subscription, which I have to say, Apple was very easy. They made it very simple to cancel cancel it. But uh, so now I'm gonna get it directly through HBO, so I can get you know I don't have to pay like a bump up through a Apple iTunes or whatever to get HBO Max. So I'm looking forward to streaming uh, Miyazaki films. That's for sure. I think I, I'm more excited about the Cartoon Network library. I believe what Rick and Morty, Aqua Teen Hunger yeah, Force. That's, yeah, that's not quite clear of how much Cartoon Network is going to be on it at launch and if how much they'll add over time. Is the eventual goal to get 100% of Cartoon Network and Adult Swim well, onto HBO Max? Like, Is that like well, a five or ten year plan? Who knows? Well, Cartoon Network's only a distributor because um, a lot of those shows on there are not owned by... Time Warner uh, or AT and T Media or whoever HBO's parent company is, um, like you know, um, the, the bad like uh, uh, what's a good example here? Any of the anime shows, right? That were on like Dragon Ball Z. Those aren't technically Cartoon Network shows, but all the Adult Swim stuff is. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see a lot of that stuff kind of land on there um, because you know I'd like to watch them, but I don't have a good place to stream. Them. Like you can't stream them; you have to pay for them or go to their website to watch them. I'm like. I don't want to pull up a website to watch this stuff. I'd rather just mm -hmm. have a have a, la a landing page. Uh, I think we're gonna try it for a little bit because you also get all the old the HBO originals. Well, we talked mm -hmm. about before. Uh, you're right. There's no new content, but you know who's to say you know what has the pandemic delayed for them to launch on there? Um, that they're like, well, we just have to wait and put it yeah, out later. Yeah, they they were supposed to be launching with that friends quote unquote reunion where it was just gonna be like a panel where they just all just were probably interviewed by a Joe McHale type. And I only bring up Joe McHale just because he did that like Tiger King, like reunion, whatever, when he, when he was interviewing people. So, um, and I just have to say, uh, Parks and Rec announced that they, uh, that they were going to be reuniting and they were going to mm -hmm. be doing like a scripted episode where they all reunite, uh, for, um, for charity. Now it's going to be through like zoom windows. It's going to be like one of those like zoom episodes where everyone's going to be like through talking like through a webcam or whatever but i have to say like come on friends if parks and rec can reunite in character i think all of you uh people can reunite as character uh, and not just give us a dumb interview <laughs> well i think the problem with that is the friends people got too big their egos are too big and too many people like the show uh and they were paid too much by the end of it so i don't think they want to like i think they're just tired give us what we want yeah, give mike what he wants but i want joey to get mad that people are trying to eat his food and joey doesn't share food that's all i'm asking for Whatever that means, yes. <laughs> so, all right, Mike. Well, uh, it's dinner time here. I gotta go eat, so we're gonna wrap up this show. Uh, people want to know more about what we're doing, where they can watch our episodes and listen to us. Where can they do that at? Oh, it's so easy to do. All you have to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. Uh, you can find our upcoming release page there. These release dates are changing weekly now, so if you want a nice, concise list, head on over to SuperheroSlate.com and click on Upcoming Releases. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts. 
Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. Uh, we love hearing from you guys out there, so let us know what you want us to watch. Do you want us to watch Howard the Duck, or do you want us to watch uh, Fantastic Four, the belated uh, one that never really made it to theaters? Uh, not the really bad one that we already reviewed on the show, I think. What was that, 2014, I think, that no, no, came no, no. out? It was uh, Fantastic Four, 20, I think it was 2016, because we didn't do this 20, in 2014. Okay, yeah, it was an even number year. I remember that, at yeah. least. Um, so let us know what you'd like to what you'd like us to watch first. And if you want to be a super fan of this show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and wash your hands. And we will be here every week, folks. Well, I'm going to jump back in because you didn't even let me pitch my social media here. Oh yeah, we didn't even <laughs> uh, we didn't even pitch our handles. You, I just ran right. You into did. It. You went right for it, man. Uh, so you can find me on Twitter, Valdan V A L D A N, or Instagram, Valdan eighty seven. Again, let us know which one you want us to go to because I think we're going to do one of these a month, Mike, if we can. Uh, some stuff, some older stuff, not not newer stuff. We've already done those, so I think that'd be fun. Uh, Mike, if people want to know what you're up to, where they can find you at, they can find you somewhere. Mike left. No, I'm, I'm not going to tell him. I'm not going to tell him. This would be the one episode that I don't tell you where you can find me because I've already messed up the ending and I don't deserve to plug my handle. It's Mike Warrior Design. Me, uh, but if you love me enough, you can come find me. Yeah, you can find him. <laughs> you can find him. All right, Mike. Well, we'll call in and we'll, we'll catch you guys next week. All right. Adios. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. We can keep it, uh, I mean, we can keep it, like, spoiler light. Yeah. You know.